So, uh, to that ambitious plan to try and save one of the country's most endangered species. Yeah, so uh, we have the Australian Wildlife Conservancy uh, launching this plan uh, because there's only uh, just two populations of northern Betong in far north Queensland and when you put them all together, it's still less than 1,000 animals in total. ABC's Mark Rigby spoke to the Australian Wildlife Conservancy ecologist Alexander Watson. Northern Betongs are a small macropod, about a kilogram in size. They're solitary and they occur in low numbers up in the land range and at Mount Spurgeon. They're closely related to kangaroos, belonging to the, the same superfamily, so they they hop on hind legs, they have a pouch, so just consider them to be tiny kangaroos or wallabies. How many northern betong are estimated to be living in the wild and, and whereabouts do we find them? The population of northern betongs has contracted significantly, so they used to occur almost from Rockhampton north up to places like Mount Lewis behind Cairns. There's now thought to be less than a thousand left and they occur in two populations. One of them is relatively secure in the lamb range, so places like Davies Creek that people in around Cairns will know about. There's about 750 individuals there. There's another very small population in Mount Lewis National Park at a place called Mount Spurgeon. The population there we're estimating maybe between something like 80 and 100 individuals, although we're still trying to really determine that because it's such a small population. And unfortunately, they've gone locally extinct from Mount Windsor and also down at Mount Zero Taravale. So in the last 20 years, two of their four populations have disappeared, which is why we're so concerned about the future conservation of the species. Tell us about the Australian Wildlife Conservancy's plan to repopulate this area of Mount Zero Travail. Mount Zero Travail is a sanctuary that AWC have managed for the last 15 years. And just before we owned the property, the last Northern Betong record for Mount Zero Travail was recorded, I think it was in 2003. We acquired it primarily for the conservation of species like the Northern Betong. And unfortunately, despite rigorous surveys, found that they had actually disappeared. So the actual sanctuary is a former haunt of this species. Now, they disappeared probably because of poor management of the vegetation down there by the partialists that owned the properties previously. They were cattle managers, so they used to run large numbers of cattle. They didn't implement really rigorous fire programs. And there's a good chance that the northern betongs disappeared due to that management strategy that was put in place. So since AWC bought the property, we have destocked. We have managed the fires much better and put in a really, really rigorous fire program and recreated what we think is the habitat that northern betongs occurred in. And so the idea now is to build a predator-proof fence you know, covering 1,000 hectares and then introduce betongs into that area, into habitat that they used to occur. Uh, how are you actually going to do that? I understand it involves trapping of betong from these other populations that are, well, where they actually exist. Well, that's right. So there's only a few individuals in captivity and we don't want to source those populations for the reintroduction because they may be inbred and they may have disease. And so the best way that AWC have done, and we've had, you know, 20 years of experience and we manage, you know, these sort of reintroductions across Australia is, is what they call a wild-to-wild -wild translocation. So what our plans are is to work with traditional owners, to work with Queensland Parks and Wildlife and the Department of Environment and Science and actually identify a small number of individuals in the land range in particular and move some of those individuals down to Mount Zero Taravale within that fenced area. And so our aim is to move somewhere between 30 and 50 individuals. We need to have a founder population of that size for it to be successful. If you put in less animals into the area, they may not have the genetic viability to breed up. So we really need to have enough founding populations to breed up successfully. That's based on very good research. So we'll move those anim animals down to Mount Zero Tailvale. And based on our previous experience with very similar species, so the brush-tailed betong or otherwise known as the whirly, we've, we've actually done this type of translocation in the past and it's shown to be very successful. We expect that population to increase from 30 to 50 individuals to up to 500 
in about five years. So we'll basically add another half of the population of northern bettongs into existence. So we're securing the population. What are the barriers and challenges that you have to overcome to make sure that this program succeeds in its aim? It's obviously a long process. There's a whole lot of permitting that we need to do, and so we're working very closely with the Queensland government and the traditional owners. So currently, right now at Mount Zero Taravale, we have Guga Barden traditional owners walking the fence line where we'll actually clear a 10-metre area around where we're going to build the fence, about 12 kilometres of fencing, so they're currently walking that fence line to make sure that we're not going to impact on any culturally important sites. So, you know, one of the things we're doing is making sure that traditional owners are aware and actually involved in the project. That's not only at, at Mount Zero Taravar, but also at places like the Lamb Range, where we're working with Bulaway and Jabagai and Tableland Yudinji traditional owners up there on the Betongs. And so we really want to make sure that they're across the project. We also need to work with Queensland Parks and Wildlife and make sure that they're involved and actually happy with us to proceed with this translocation. In terms of the trickiest thing about the project is the terrain in which we're going to build the fence. As someone said to me, it's going to be an engineering marvel to actually see this fence put in place because it is in a very wet area. It does cross streams. It needs to be built in such a way that it excludes cats coming in. Because the idea is once you build the fence, you get rid of the pigs and you get rid of you know, any cattle, if there's any cattle there, and get rid of all the cats from that in- inside the area. And that's when you introduce the bertongs in there. And so actually managing that fence line and the integrity of that fence after it's being built will be the biggest challenge. What about the process of actually trapping these betong itself? How difficult is that? Yeah, they're surprisingly easy. They, they become trap happy. We caught a number of individuals uh, almost immediately. It's a, it's a simple function of using the right trap and the right bait and they are very happy to cubby the trap. We actually open the traps up at dusk and then at about three or four hours later walk the trap lines. They are pretty accommodating with coming to, to the traps and coming to the bait that are in the trap. I like the term trap happy. That's Australian Wildlife Conservancy ecologist Alexander Watson speaking there with ABC's Mark Rigby. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the plan works and that they get that fence in and that we get the population back up and running.